Hello everyone, TCG Talk here, back with another video and back with another deck tech video. Today we will be going over Briar, um, Warden of Thorns, one of the new heroes from the Tales of Aria set. We just recently did an Ice Lexi build, so now we're going to change things up and go with one of my favorite classes, which is Runeblade. Now, I've made this video two or three times in the last three days, um, and the reason being is because I'm constantly updating this deck. Um, so I'm going to link the deck below. You might see like one or two changes by the time you watch the video, depending on how long the video has been posted. But with these new new heroes and and new compositions, and with you know some of the bands and changes that we've had in the meta, you know th these decks are going to be in constant motion. But I think that this is a good spot um, on where this deck's at. So if you enjoy Runeblade, if you enjoy kind of being the aggressor, going wide, doing a lot of different attacks, and giving your opponent a lot of different things to think about when they're defending. Then this is a good deck for you. Um, so it's Briar. For anyone that's not aware, she has two abilities. She makes what's called Embodiment of Earth Tokens and Embodiment of Lightning Tokens. When she makes an Earth Token, it basically gives all her non-attack actions plus one defense on her next turn. And then Embodiment of Lightning gives her next attack go again. Um, and you basically do this by either A, dealing damage to get the Earth Tokens with your attack action cards. Or B, if you play two non-attack actions on the same turn, then you get an Embodiment of Lightning Token. So basically, you can see by both of her abilities, it's good to go wide with her. Try to get as many attacks and many cards down as possible, which you kind of got to keep in mind what you're pitching and what you're doing. But overall, she's a very aggressive character that you can do a lot of things with while also providing pretty good defense. Um, so we'll get right into it. We're going to use her uh, her weapon, Rosetta Thorn. It's a great weapon. It deals two physical, which is not that much for a one-cost attack, but... Not a lot of people like to block a two cost or two physical attack with one card because I'm only attacking with my weapon, and if they're going to defend, that's not good for them. Um, but if you play a non-attack action and attack action in the same turn on your on your offensive turn, then it will also deal two arcane, so it's dealing two and two, uh, which can be very useful for that chip damage as you're grinding out the game. It's just a great weapon. You also can use the weapon of Viscerai and a couple of other Runeblade characters if you want. Um, when it comes to equipment. I'm going to do the same thing I always do, which is I'm going to give you high high value options and I'm going to give you low value options uh, because not everybody has the money to shell out for an Arcanite Skullcap or a Findel Spring Tunic or a Spellbound Creepers. I mean, these two cards alone, Tunic and Creepers, are going for 150 to 180 depending on where you buy them from. Not everybody has the money to shell that out. So I'm going to give you low budget options and high budget options. If money's not an option for you or, or is, isn't an issue for you, or if you're giving good pulls, um, the ideal equipment setup for this deck is Arcanite Skullcap. It gives you that arcane barrier, gives you the plus one defense. Um, and it's just a really good defensive card. It's a pretty standard card for really high tier decks. Uh, Findle Spring Tunic is good, gives you basically a resource every three turns. Um, and it defends for one if you absolutely need it. It does have blade breaks, so you won't be able to use it anymore, but it's really good. Um, and for Briar, you know, Heart and Cross Trap is another good option, but for Fennel Spring Tunic, it's good for those games that you might have to grind out those long games where you just need that extra resource. Um, for your arms, ideally, you're going to want Grasp of the Art Knight. This is going to be a once per turn action where you create two rune chant or you create a rune chant token. Um, and this ability costs more the more rune chants you have. This is really good just to get that extra little arcane damage in. Uh, with attacks that you're dealing so your opponent can't just you know arcane barrier one and get rid of the arcane and then for your uh legs ideally you're going to be wanting to use spellbound creepers one of the best uh equipment pieces for briar um you basically put a bind counter on them and you may play your next non-attack action as though it were an instant um and then every time that bind counter goes up you have to deal that much arcane damage that turn in order for spellbound creepers to stay in play otherwise they're destroyed this is pretty easy to do with briar if you have the right composition um and this just allows you to play multiple non-attack actions on a turn uh keep in mind with this new set for anybody who's trying briar out if you have an ability where it gives your next non-attack action to be played at instant speed if that next non-attack action it has go again then you gain another action point right so if you fuse with vela flash right one of the attacks in this set um that doesn't naturally have go again but then you fuse it and you get your next non-attack action card at instant speed. And then your next non-attack action card, let's say it's flash or anything has go again. Um, then you gain that action point back and you can keep playing. So as you can see, it helps you really go wide. So that's your, your four main skull cap tunic art, grasp the art knight and spellbound creepers. Um, if you don't have all those and you just have kind of base level equipment, 
Crown Economy is really good. Heart and Cross Straps really good. Mark of Lightning's amazing for a low level budget equipment piece. And then Snapdragon Scalers is kind of the low budget options. The one note I want to make on the low budget is Mark of Lightning. Do not underestimate this card. Um, again, with Briar, every time you deal damage, uh, whether it's arcane or physical, with a attack action card, it gains that one Earth of Embodiment token. Um, the reason Mark of Lightning is so important is it gives basically one damage. It allows that attack action card to deal an additional one damage when it's defended against. So this is important because let's say you attack uh, with Arcanic Shockwave for four physical and then you fuse it, giving it one arcane. Let's just say the opponent only blocks for three physical and they let the arcane go. You get one earth token for the one physical that got through. You get another earth token for the one arcane that got through. And then if you play Mark of Lightning with it, since Mark of Lightning is allowing Ar Arcanic Shockwave to deal that extra one damage and the one damage is coming from the attack action, that's a third earth of environment token. So now... On your defensive turn, you, instead of your flash card blocking for two, it now blocks for five, because, which is insane for one card. Um, so that's the equipment pieces. Uh, keep in mind high and low budget options, uh, just whatever works for you. So now that we get in the deck, big picture, right? If you take one thing away from this video, the biggest thing is with this deck, you want to go wide. You want a lot of attacks. You want a lot of attack action cards, non attack action cards. You want to kind of ping them off of each other uh, to get those earth of embodiment and, and or embodiment of earth and embodiment of lightning tokens. And then the second thing you want to be doing is trying to stack the arcane damage and stack that physical damage with some of the buffs that these cards give. Um, so you have arcanic shockwave, one of a great fuse card in the set four damage at red, and if you fuse it, it deals one arcane. Um, Ball Lightning, one of the most underrated and probably best commons in the set, is whenever Ball Light, whenever a Lightning or Elemental Action card would deal damage this combat chain, instead it deals that much plus one. This also counts for Ball Lightning, right? So when you play Ball Lightning, which does three damage, if they don't block, then it gets plus one. It does four damage. If they only block for two, then it and one gets through, then it does two damage. You see, it adds one. And then for everything in the combat chain after that, it adds one. And that includes arcane damage, right? So if your arcanite arcanic shockwave deals four physical and one arcane, um, it's gonna deal five physical and two arcane if they don't block it. So ball lightning just buffs, it's just automatic buffs for everything. And if you can put like a lightning press or a weave lightning on ball lightning and make sure it hits. It's just really useful. Electrify, we're using this card for two reasons. One, it's going to give us that kind of plus three damage if one of our attacks hit, which is its base ability. But also playing it from Arsenal allows us to draw a card, which is huge if we're trying to go wide. Um, Flash just gives your next card go again. Simple as that. It's good for pitch. It's good if it's played at instant speed, right? So if you fuse it with, if you fuse it with Vela Flash, like literally play Vela Flash, fuse it with Flash. Which when you fuse Vela Flash, it gives your next non-attack action in, uh, to be able to play at instant speed. Uh, so now Flash is being played at instant speed, and then since Flash has go again, now you get that action point back. So you can see how these like ping off of each other. Heaven's Claw is probably the best generic attack lightning card in the set uh, at. It's a at red, it's a one cost for five, and at yellow, it's a one cost for four. Both of them meet the break point that you want. Um, and if you add a buff onto this, it's really useful. Lightning Surge, similar. We're wanting to play it from Arsenal, so we get that go again. Uh, Rights of Lightning is really good if you fuse it, um, it deals uh, one arcane damage. And then if that arcane damage gets through, or if Rights of Lightning deals arcane damage in any way, then it gets go again. Um, Sigil of Suffering, amazing defensive card that came with the set. Uh, it deals one arcane when you defend with it, and it defends at red, it defends for three. If they don't block that arcane, then it's going to defend for four. So ideally, you have a defense reaction for zero cost that's defending for four and also dealing a damage to the opponent. You can even win off their turn if if, if they're at a low life threshold. Sending Steel Blade is really good as four physical, one arcane. You'll see why that's really important here in a second when we kind of get to our like key cards in the set. Vela Flash already talked about. Weave Lightning I'm using for pitch, but it's also zero cost at red, and it gains plus three. Your next attack action gains plus three, and if it's fused, it gains go again. Uh, so, you know, if you if you play a Weave Lightning into, um, you know, any attack, like a Heaven's Claw, that um, not Heaven's Claw, but like a Arcanic Shockwave, and you fuse it with something like Heaven's Claw, um, your Arcanic Shockwave is going to gain go again, which is really useful, and it's going to be hitting for seven instead of four. And Twine Lightning is really good. If it's fused against Go Again, it's one of the few elemental cards I really like, uh, the base elemental attack cards. 
Channel Thunder Step's really good. Um, whenever you play an attack action card, you may pay one resource. If you do, it gains go again. And then basically you have to equal the amount of lightning pitches that to the amount of counters that uh, Channel Thunder Step has in order to keep it on the field. Otherwise, it is destroyed. Basically, this is really good to give all your attacks go again for like one to two turns as long as you have the resources to pay for it. Maybe even three turns if you're lucky. Now we're kind of getting into the the part the cards that set everything up right so ball lightning is one of those cards that sets everything up because it gives all your attacks plus one if they hit the two cards that really can hurt an opponent is sting of sorcery and flicker wisp right um if you can play flicker wisp first right and then you deal and then um which basically says if flicker wisp is fused until the end of turn action cards not attack actions just action cards in general effects you control that deal arcane damage deal that much instead instead deal that much plus one so it deals one arcane damage and then its own fusibility is going to allow it to deal two arcane damage then you play sting of sorcery which sting of sorcery is attack action cards you control gain when you attack with this deal one arcane um and what why this is important is then every single attack you play after these two cards, which both were cost zero, by the way, deals one arcane damage. And if they don't block it, it actually, well, it deals one arcane damage. And then from the fuse effect with Flicker Wisp, it actually deals two arcane damage. So every attack you play after these two will deal two arcane damage automatically, which is huge. Um, especially if you're playing like an Arcanic Shockwave, which already deals, already deals, uh, one arcane by itself so it's going to get since it already deals one arcane it's then going to deal two arcane from the buff from flicker wisp right then just for attacking with it because of the sting of sorcery buff um you're going to get one arcane from that so it's going to get one additional arcane from sting of sorcery and then it's going to get one additional arcane from flicker wisp and then it has one arcane on its own. So you can kind of see how these start to stack up. If you can really stack these cards together, I've had turns, some turns where I've dealt eight to 10 physical damage and I've dealt eight to 10 arcane damage in the same turn. Um, they really stack on each other and they're really useful. So keep that in mind. These, these kind of cards at the bottom, these are the cards that are going to enable your chains and really enable you to stack that arcane damage um, and really pop off for a lot of damage. Blink's amazing. You gain one action point at zero cost. It's simple as that. And you can use it for pitch if you absolutely don't need that action point. Pulse of Candle Hold, you can only have one of these in your deck. Basically allows you to put two lightning or elemental cards back on top of your deck from your graveyard. So if you just had a really good pivot turn, maybe the cards you have in hand now are the card in your arsenal. Um, after the pivot turn is really useful for those cards again, you can put them right back on top of your deck. Um, and it has go again, so it's really useful. I have this one amulet lightning in here just because I wanted 10 blues. Um, I might move this out into something else, but I do like the fact that I could get go again with it and it's zero cost, which is really nice. So as you can see, a lot of these attacks build on themselves. Um, I don't have a whole lot of pumps in this set. The only really pump I have for physical damage is uh, weave lightning, but the arcanic pumps, arcane pumps is unreal. Um, like I said, you could easily be doing five to 10 arcane damage a turn if you're doing it right. Um, for my cyborg cards, Tome of Fendal, which is gaining popularity by the day, it's unreal, uh, is really good. And then Sigil of Suffering, if you maybe you're, you're playing someone where you want a little bit more defense reactions, um, just to kind of help sure up your defense a little bit, you could put in Sigil of Suffering, uh, maybe for these Heaven's Claws, uh, because you're not going to be needing to fuse quite as much. Um, but this is the deck. Again, if you like a, aggressive decks that hit an opponent from multiple areas and also can defend pretty well by itself. Uh, this is the deck for you. Um, please let me know if you if you decide to use this deck uh, and what cards would you add or take away. I'm really uh, always loving uh, different opinions from people with flesh and blood. I'm pretty new to the game myself. And so whether you've been playing a week, a month, a year, doesn't matter. Uh, give your opinion. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, also, like and subscribe if you want. I'm going to keep putting out these deck tech videos and hopefully I can bring some value to you guys and also be doing some fun content. Um, I'm going to try to do some other funny stuff, do some tier lists. Um, I'm going to have uh, my wife, Alexa, come on and show her the car, the face of a card and see what she would name it because uh, she doesn't really play this game. So I think that'd be a funny piece of comment. Let me content. Let me know if you think that'd be cool. Um, I'm going to try some different funny stuff while also giving you all value with these decks and a couple other things about the game. But if you like this, uh, leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining TCG Talk, and I hope you all have a great day.